Hi everyone. Hi everybody. In today's video, we are going to be doing something uh, very exciting. So we are going to be doing a pedicure, but right. on Mr. So on life right. here. And this is a month later. We did a pedicure a month ago. So look at those talents. Yeah, so you'll see everything from close up. And this time I'm going to be using the cuticle remover because most, most of you guys don't use electric files. So I'll show you how to most do most of it with the cuticle remover. And the reason why this is exciting is because so there was a very good article that was written by Dr. Vivian Valenti, who is the creator of Dazzle Dry, and she wrote a very good article in Neil Pro, and I'm going to link this in the description box explaining why nitrocellulose in the nail polish could be yellowing the nails. Very, very interesting. So in this video, this is going to be a series of videos, six videos, and we are going to be polishing only one foot with a very natural looking polish so that at least the, the nails look the same as summer. So we're gonna use the SC, SC um, smoothie and the Adele setter and then nothing on this foot and in a few months we will see of monthly pedicures if there was a difference in the in the nails okay as you can see the nails are looking really good there is not a lot of um hard skin around the nails because we are not cutting that skin so it's not growing thicker there was just a little bit of cuticle not too bad so we're going to start by cutting the nails nice and straight and this is what i like to do i have a little paper I'm going to link the clippers if you're interested because these are really really good clippers i like them because they they're way better than the other clippers that people normally use much more comfortable and it is important to clip nails a piece at a time because if you try to clip everything like this you're putting too much stress on the nail and it can crack And I find with these clippers too, it's very easy to get the nails out of them. So what I do here, I just feel with the bottom part, like with this bottom blade. And I try to run along the nail just to make sure I don't clip the hyponychium. And the hyponychium is that seal that seals the nail and the, the nail bed. And I clip them in little pieces. It's much easier that way. I always make sure I don't shorten the nails too much. Because that can lead to ingrown nails. At the end of the video, if you're interested, I'll show you the um, the filter that I'm using and my setup. So keep watching. So I'm going to turn on the the filter. I mean the uh, filter filter because I don't want to be breathing in the dust. And even though this is a natural dust, it's still not to inhale it. Not, it's not good to inhale it. So I pull back the skin so I can get at the corner. I really like this file for that purpose, especially for feet, because it's very thin and I can get into the corner and make sure that this corner is nice and smooth. So not, I don't make it round. But I want to make sure that there is no harsh edges that can kind of dig into the skin and hurt someone.
By the way, filing back and forth is fine. What makes a difference is the grit and not the material that the file is made out of. And although I really love the glass files and how gentle they are, and I use them quite a bit on natural nails, on hands, I do like these thin files. These are from Erica. And I've tried different metal files, different diamond files, and I find these ones are really good because they don't bend. So they feel very, very sturdy. So here's what I do. This is how I kind of hold. I push this down, this toe down, and this is how I file. I will smooth the edges still with a buffer. I do recommend pedicures definitely once a month because the nails have to be shortened and otherwise they can crack, they can dig into the skin, which is absolutely not good. The maintenance is much easier when people come on a regular basis. So I highly recommend doing that instead of just doing pedicures in the summer. And in the winter, it's a good idea to even skip the polish and do some treatments and things like that. But still, do your pedicures or get them done. At this point, I'm going to apply the cuticle remover to these nails and let it work. So this is what I do. I just like a one, what is it? Pipe full, one dropper full. So yeah, this is one drop of, two drop dropper fulls of the cuticle remover. And I just really saturate the cuticle. I just started doing that. Although I have to say, I for some people, I like to use a little bit more in these areas because it's easier to clean out the nail. Yeah, there we go. When it's softened. This is Blue Cross, by the way. All the links are in the description box. Okay, let's go on to the other foot. So very quickly, I'm going to tell you why Dr. Valenti, Vivian Valenti, thinks that the nitrocellulose is um, turning the nails yellow. So there are probably three reasons why the, nail, the nails can stain. So one is the colorants or the pigments or the colorants in the nail polish, they can stain the nails for sure. And that happens, especially if someone has very porous nails or a little bit damaged nails and they are a little flaky and the color can kind of get in between the little flakes and stain the nail or just stay there. So if you're using a base coat, the base coat is going to fill in those little uh, flakings and then the color is not going to get in there. Also for polishes, especially that are blue or green, they tend to uh, yellow the nails. And I think Doug Shun was saying that certain pigments stain more than others. There are some reds that stain the most. I'll, um, I don't know on top of, um, off the top of my, my head exactly what they are, but I'll put them, put that quote in the description box. So some of them are more prone to staining the nails than others. So for sure, some of that staining can be due to the pigments. But very often I see 
that people that have even like very, very sheer polishes, they still end up with yellow nails. So Dr. Valenti explained that what happens is nitrocellulose is a film forming agent and it's pretty much an every nail polish out there because this is the, the most used film forming agent. And nitrocellulose is um, very good because it has it lasts really long. It, in combination with some other ingredients, it has a very bon good bonds to the nail and it creates a very nice film and it's been used for years and years and years. But what happens is apparently when nitros nitrocellulose breaks down and it breaks down due to, I think, water exposure. And again, don't quote me because I'm going to, um, yeah, check out the, the, the link for the full article. But anyway, so when nitrocellulose is exposed to water, it deteriorates or dis disintegrates or how do you call it? Uh, breaks down kind of right and when it breaks down it releases nitric acid because somehow it's washed with nitric acid or something like that so there is yeah it's nitrocellulose nitrocellulose anyway so and nitric acid is very corrosive um, and it's it's a very strong oxidizer that damages especially proteins and keratin nail plate is made out of keratin so that's a protein so it can damage the keratin and the damage usually it shows up as first kind of a yellowish and then brownish color which that makes sense right so interesting article so that's why it's going to be very interesting to see if we will see any yellowing just from a clear nail polish that doesn't have anything so now i'm going to spray this foot with uh this with water because we want to make sure that we neutralize this um product because it's very, very alkaline. Anyway, so the third reason why the, the nails would this color is food. So for example, you know, like even blueberries or turmeric and things like that will definitely stain the nails. Or even smoking will definitely stain the nails, right? So things like that. So the reason why I neutralize this with water, and this is a very, very important step, is that obviously the skin and the nail are both made of keratin. So if the product dissolves the skin, it also will dissolve the nail. So you don't wanna be leaving this on the nail for too long. And you don't wanna be leaving this on the skin for too long because it can eventually, it can tap, totally irritate the skin. So I'm doing these little circles and I'm just lifting the proximal nail fold and lifting the cuticle. Mostly the proximal nail fold. I'm trying to kind of lift the proximal nail fold. When I'm doing dry pedicure, I do it slightly differently. Or what you can also do, you can first, before you put the cuticle remover, push back the proximal nail fold and then put the cuticle remover on the cuticle. You can see here, very, very good example, how this part here is a proximal nail fold and the white piece here, this is cuticle. And very often people think that this part here is a cuticle, but no, this is, this is living skin. The cuticle is the white film that's left on the nail. Now I'm lifting the cuticle. Sometimes it's on the toes I find because I guess it's been there for like, see? There's a distinctively two kind of layers of skin. One is cuticle, which is the dead skin, and the other one is proximal nail fold, which is a living skin. Do get questions quite a bit people asking what do i do if this area is overgrown i made a whole video about it I'm going to link it below check it out but basically is if you push that skin back on a regular basis and you use creams that skin is not going to 
stick to the nail is not going to grow and stretch with the nail when it's not stuck to it. Here's what I'm going to do. I don't know if you can see, but now I'm clipping actually the cuticle, I'm not clipping the proximal nail bone. Can you see this white skin? Sometimes the cuticle is is def definitely more difficult to break down almost. It feels like a one piece you see. This is not a part of proximal nail, but this is actually, as you could see, it all, almost it's came coming out of from underneath of the proximal nail fold. Also when you put the um, the clippers this way and not this way you know that you you won't be clipping the the wrong thing although you have to be very very careful because very often what people do they just push everything back and then they just clip everything that sticks up but this way you can actually clip the living skin as well as you see i'm going to go in this way the corners i find usually have a very stubborn kind of cuticle right here is coming from underneath that living skin. All right. Okay, we're going to clean up. The skin that kind of builds up its dead skin cells that build up underneath the nail. You have to do this gently. Sometimes they they get so impacted that people think that they have ingrown toenails, but really they don't. just have impacted skin. Very often they, people have fluffies from socks. It's very common. So I'm going to just check the other corners as well, making sure that there is no hard edges. This one looks a little, a little sharp. So I'm going to go over and just kind of feel for the edges. Push back that skin. Just go underneath here. There we go. I have to say, this is much more difficult to do this yourself because I, when I'm working, it's actually hard for me to do my own toes, I have to say, because I'm working um, at a very good angle here and see what's going on.
So this part you have to be careful with because this part of the, the manicure stick is a little bit abrasive. So make sure you don't put a lot of pressure because you don't want to be you don't want to be removing um, layers of the nail, right? And I like to work from the middle down. I find, especially with this tool, every tool is slightly different. Kind of have to find a way of using it effectively. And here, there is a cuticle and proximal fold. Somehow, kind of stuck together a little bit. Okay, can you see this? This is what I'm talking about. So that is a cuticle. And this, sorry. <laughs> and this part here is a living skin. So this is proximal fold, this is cuticle. And these two areas are very, very confused because many, many, I would say most of the textbooks are um, quite outdated and then they don't talk about it. The, the newest re research has been done in 2019 by Doug Shun and he was, he did spend a lot of time really trying to figure out what's, what exactly is the cuticle and he made a very good um, graph and I'm going to link this. Actually it's always in my videos in the description box and it's called Where is Cuticle? On the very bottom by Doug Shun. It's an article. It makes total sense. Total sense. Finally. And he explains uh, where the uh, eponychium is. Because the, the proximal nail fold used to be called eponychium or something, but it really didn't make a lot of sense. Anyway, you have to read the article to really understand. Okay, this edge feels pretty sharp, so I'm going to make sure underneath. Just very gently rounded. So now if you have, if this area is like a little calloused or something, you can Actually, go in there with the file this way. This is how I would do it to smooth it. There's nothing really to smooth. Okay, I'm going to round off the free end. Now what I do with buffers is I always use the softer side and then I just soften it additionally with the file and just very gently because especially if you're polishing the nails you have to make sure that the the cuticle area is nice and smooth that you don't have any catches so I don't file the whole nail I just kind of angle this making sure that this is nice and smooth 
again, I'm not trying to smooth the, the whole nail. It's just that area where that skin was removed from, just so the color doesn't catch. And at the same time, softening the free edge a little bit. You can actually go like this with the buffer to soften the edges of the skin and just gently. That's it. Don't forget that the nail grows from here, from underneath the proximal nail fold. So if you damage the nail plate here, the, the nail plate is not going to regenerate from the bottom up. It has to grow out completely. So if you file every time you do a pedicure, this is about 18 months growth. So if you do pedicures once a month, you have filed this 18 times. So sometimes you can actually file half of your plate down or even more. So it's very important to not buff the same area twice and always buff as little as you have to, as little as you can. And, and knowing that you are buffing to make this area nice and well, smooth so you can polish it properly and for the adhesion to be a little bit better. But it's this never has to be, natural nail never has to be filed or buffed for the health of it. Okay, so, so now that the nail is dry, you can see I don't want to dig too much, but there we go. This is what I'm talking about. This is cute. Somehow, and I don't know what it is, it's just easier to get at it when it's dry, a little dry. Again, I'm not cutting the proximal nail fold at all. It's much, again, I know I keep talking about the e-file, but I like to push back the, the living skin and leaving the cuticle behind and then get it with the, with the electric file. But I do understand, obviously, not everybody has electric files and for your own use is not really necessary. It's hard to kind of see what you're doing and you can do more damage than good. You can easily overfile over your, your uh, nail plate. All right. Okay, so now we are going to see how the bottoms are. There was, there was a little bit of a build up here. Other than that, there's a little callus here, tiny bit, and just a little bit of roughness here. So it is very important not to again overfile the skin because when that skin forms it's usually there for a reason. So I'm going to just dab it with the blue cross. At this part you should be wearing gloves really because blue cross is like I said you don't want to be leaving this on the skin for too long. You can also use urea-based spray, although these are harder to get. 
by non-professionals. And this one, the urea-based spray, you can actually leave this on and you don't have to you don't have to remove it. I guess it depends which one, but most of them you can actually leave it on the skin. After a minute, I'm just rinsing. the skin and I'm going to use the glass file you see this is the more of a um, rough side I definitely see way too much filing people file they try to file away the dryness you cannot file away dryness. Dryness has to be healed. Dryness means that the barrier is disrupted. Bring the heel toward the toes towards you. Okay. You can refresh the skin a little bit with the file, but you cannot file away the dryness. And I explain very often to clients because very often they expect that dry skin to be gone after a pedicure, but I tell them, because I feel the skin, so if there is a bounce, if there is a give, there is absolutely no callus. So callus can be reduced a little bit by a pedicurist. Obviously, you don't want to remove it all. People need it. He does a lot of running and working out, so beach even. People here need a little bit of callus. And when people have dry skin, they just have to take care of their skin on a regular basis, apply urea-based creams every night after a shower. When there's still some moisture in the skin. I think very often we're so tempted to have these, as professionals, these, these very good and impressive before and after pictures that we kind of give clients this idea that this is what should happen in a salon. And that doesn't teach clients the fact that it's a progress. Coming for pedicures, it's a progress. You can't undo a year worth of neglect in one pedicure, safely. So what do I do if clients come in with like really, really bad calluses? If someone has a really excessive amount of callus, it's not a job for nail technicians, it's a job for a podiatrist. So I do send them to a foot care specialist because sometimes um, that's a better um, solution for the client, safer solution for the client. And then I maintain the feet and I just tell clients how to take care of their feet and how to make sure that this doesn't happen. Because excessive callus is actually a medical issue, not a cosmetic issue anymore. So there was a little bit of bliss, like bit of a, there was a bit of a blister. So I wanna make sure that I don't overfile this area. I'm using the soft side. The lighting is not the best here. Sometimes when clients have a bit of a callus on their toes, you can do it this way as well. Okay. So for the sake of this experiment, we are going to treat both feet the same. So um, I'm going to spray the nails with 99% alcohol and wipe them with a clean towel. That way I don't get any fluffies. And then 
next month when we remove this polish, I'm going to obviously remove this with acetone, but I'm also going to um, scrub the other foot with acetone, just so the nails, all of them are exposed to the same chemicals. Okay, so I'm going to use smoothie. Turn your foot a little bit. So I'm going to use two coats of the smoothie, top coat. And to get like a very natural finish, I'm going to use another coat of the smoothie. Because I don't have the SE matte top coat. Actually, I can use another matte top coat here. Yeah. And this is how I place these things because these uh, two toes kind of overlap a little bit. So I use a wrapped napkin. This is nice and dry. I find sadly this top coat uh, shrinks sometimes a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to give this five minutes to dry and then we'll put the matte top coat. Okay, it's been five minutes and I have to say this is pretty dry. So this is impressive. This is impressive, Essie. And I'm going to use this Essence matte top coat. I usually like to stick with the system, but I do not have Essie matte top coat. So if you are still watching, please let me know in the comment section if you think that this foot is going to experience some yellowing or not. OK, 
Okay, this one's turning matte. I find also with the matte top coats, they don't stay very matte. They look very matte uh, initially, and then after any type of cream or oil is applied, they end up looking a little bit more like a satin, not really matte. Okay, so this foot also is going to be sprayed with prep, which in this case is a 99% alcohol and wiped, just like the other foot. So this is how they're looking, very similar. I have to say this one looks more even. But we'll see. Yeah. Because this one naturally has some shine. Okay, so, so far, thank you so much for watching, guys. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video. And please follow us if you would like to see how the nails are going to look in a month as well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.